Right, so we're going to do some revision of differentiation from first principles, and then we're going to go into a rule for differentiating, okay? So this is what we looked at last week. Basically, a posh expression for the slope of the curve. Right, so if this is the graph, that's the, that's, that's, the, that's, the, that's the actual function, right? If I put x in, I get f of x out. We should know that from our work on functions. If I put, that's, if that's the distance from here to there is h, that's x plus h. So if I put x plus h in, I get f of x plus h out, okay? So if you look at this in terms of the slope equation we learned previously, y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1, or as we otherwise know it, rise over run. Okay, the rise is this, which is the distance from here to there, which is f of x, the output here, so y2, take away y1, or in function notation, f of x plus h, take away f of x f of x h plus f of x minus f of x here, okay? I'll get to this section as a reminder later on, but let's look at this bit for now. So that's the rise and the run is h. So that's basically what this is, a posh function version of that, right? Now, the trouble is when we've got a curve, you know, if I want to find the slope here, I draw a line there, okay? The small, and as I said the other day, the smaller h is, so if h is here, the more accurate the slope would be to that point, okay? So as this, this notation here means, as h approaches zero, the slope limits towards what we want it to be, okay? But ultimately, we're looking at the slope of a curve. This is the notation for differentiation. We also write that, and I'll do this later on, as dy dx. So that's the same thing, okay? That's the theory behind what we're going to do. How do we do this? Well, let's look at one of the homework questions. It says differentiate from first principles this function, okay? So, step one, we need to get this expression for f of x plus h. So let's do that. So f of, as, we, as we know from our work on functions, f of x plus h, we just put x plus h in here for x. So this is going to be x plus h squared minus 2 times x plus h plus 5. So then we're going to multiply this out carefully, okay? So it's going to be x squared plus 2xh plus h squared. For this, x plus h times x plus h is that. Then minus 2x minus 2h plus 5. Let's just do a quick spot check to see if we can tidy that up at all, see if there's any like terms. No, there is not. Okay, so now we're going to put this f of x plus h and f of x into here, okay? So we're going to write it as f dash x, which is differentiating, f of x plus h, which is this, minus f of x, so we can put that in brackets, okay, minus all of this, all over h, okay, so then we've got this big long expression on top of this fraction, we're going to try and tidy that up, so let's look at it, let's look at the like terms, I got x squared minus x squared, so they go um, I've got minus 2x minus minus 2x, that is 4x here, and I've got 5, I've got 5 minus 5, so the, the numbers cancel out, right? So let's look at what I've got left, I've got 2xh plus h squared plus 4x, because that's, and that's minus 2h. all over h. So f dash x is equal to that. 
Okay, sorry, you must move the camera up. Let's go through that again. So camera out. Right. So let's tidy that up again. So I've got x squared plus 2xh plus h squared for this. I've got minus 2xh, minus 2x, minus 2h, and I've got plus 5. Then I'm taking away the original function, right? So x squared minus x squared leaves me nothing. I've got 2xh, I've got h squared, 2xh, h squared, minus 2x, minus, minus 2x. Actually, I made a mistake there. That should be 0, shouldn't it? Minus 2x minus minus 2x is 0, so that goes away. Uh, and I've got minus 2h and no like terms there, okay? So let's look at this. I've got h in every um, term on top, so I can factorize that. So I've got 2x plus h, okay, so I put the h outside the bracket, h times 2x gives me 2xh, h times h gives me h squared, I've got minus 2 there, all over h, so then these two can cancel, so I end up with 2x plus h minus 2, right, so as I said earlier, what we want to happen, and this is where this notation is, is important, when h approaches 0, that's what we want, because that gives us the most accurate value for the slope, okay? So the, the, the slope limits towards what we want. Right, so let's look at it. So f dash x equals as h approaches 0. Let's look at this. As h approaches 0, that's going to go away. This h is going to go away. We can put it down to 0. So it's going to be 2x minus 2. Right, so this function differentiated gives me 2x minus 2. Okay. Now, let's look at the application of that, which is the second part of the, of the question. Um, if we go to our books, uh, what was it, page 273, it says then, hence, find the slope of the tangent at the point 2, 5. Okay, so at the point 2, 5, this is the input, or x value, that's the output. Okay, so let's say we should know that the function here is a u-shaped, because it's a positive x squared coefficient. Let me do a little sketch. So that's, that's U shaped like that. And let's. What we want to do now is find the slope. So that's when x equals two. So if that's two there. I want to find the slope here. Okay. Actually, I'm going to draw that again. That's too small. Just to highlight this. All right. Um, Let's call out the graph. I don't know what the roots are, so I'm not sure this is an accurate sketch of the graph, but I'm trying to ha highlight. So if that's 2, I want to find the slope here, okay? So what this, what this differentiation does, it gives me a, a method of finding, this is called a tangent, where it just touches, yeah? If it's 3, I'd find the slope here by subbing 3 into x. If it's, you know, 5, I'd find the slope here, etc. Whatever it touches, the tangent at that point, okay? So let's go back. So if I want to find out the slope, so this is basically an expression for the slope anywhere on the curve. So when x equals 2, I can say that the slope, so this is part 2, is equal to 2 times whatever value x is, which is 2 in this case. So 2 times 2 minus 2, which is 4 minus 2, which is 2. So the slope of the curve at when x equals 2 is 2. Okay? It's the part 3 then says now find the equation of the tangent to the curve at y equals fx equals uh, at the point 2, 5. So now we're linking in with coordinate geometry of the line. Right? So we know the slope is 2. 
we know this point is on the line. Okay, so let's go back to my little tiny graph here. So I've got a line here now. So we've got a slope of the tangent. They're asking us to find the actual equation of that line. So we look at y minus y1 equals mx minus x1. So linking in coordinate geometry of the line. I know this is 2 and 5. So it becomes y minus 5, because that's a coordinate on it, is equal to 2 x minus 2. Multiply that out. Normally it's good math practice to put in general form and go from there. Okay? Then we're done for that question. But that's a good question to, to basically uh, explain and analyze what we're looking at throughout this topic, at the start of this topic anyway, is looking at curves and looking at fine the, the slope of the tangent to that curve. Right? So I want you to do question 5 as well. Let me run through the solutions to question 5 because that's going to lead me on to the kind of shortcut method, which is the rule for differentiation. So 5 part 1, f of x equals minus x squared, right? It's, it's asking us to find the derivative, which is differentiation, that's basically. So I'm telling now the answer, you need, you need to show your workings like I did using this rule. Sorry about the camera. Using that rule, okay? So your solution should be minus 2x. So the derivative of this, when you differentiate that, you should get minus 2x. Part 2, 4x minus x squared. f dash x, which is your derivative, should give you 4 minus 2x. And the last one, part 3 up here. 2 minus x minus 3x squared. Your derivative should be minus 1 minus 6x. Okay? So I'm going to use this now. Right, so you're going to do them because it, it says in that question, drive from first principles, and we need to be able to do that in the course, right? So we're going to do that. You're going to do that for your homework, in addition to your homework. And what I'm going to do, going to do now is I'm going to show you uh, kind of a shortcut method, differentiating by rule, which we're going to use from now on. So if you're asked to differentiate by first principles, you must go through this scenario and let h tend towards zero and sort it out from there. Otherwise, we're going to take the shortcut method. It's always better to do shortcuts if we've got them, all right? So, ultimately, in your tables, you will see this, okay? Uh, f dash x equals dy dx, which we now know means derivative or differentiation, differentiation okay? Um, is n x to the n minus 1, if uh, f of x equals x to the n. All looks very posh, but just stay with me. It's quite straightforward, okay? So if a function looks like this, x to the power of n, that's what it looks like when you differentiate it. So let's look at this up here. This is minus x squared to the power of 2. So you basically, what you're doing is, you're bringing this power, look at my pen here, bring the power down and taking it one away from it, okay? So I'm bringing the power down. There's always a minus, there's already a minus one there, so minus two down, and I'm taking one away from minus two, so minus two x. Okay. So this is the shortcut rule. <coughs> when you've got two terms like this, you just treat each one separately. So this is four x to the power of one. So I already have a coefficient here for x. Okay, that just stays there. You multiply this by this. Just like this was a minus 1 here, 2 times minus 1 is minus 2. So we do 1 times 4, which is 4, and I take 1 away from the power, right? So don't forget, 1 minus 1 is 0. x to the power of 0 is equal to 1. Anything to the power of 0 is 1. So it's 4 times 1, which is just 4. This is minus x squared, which is the same as that. So bring the 2 down. That's x to the power of 1. Take away 1 from the power. Okay, let's look at this. When you have a constant by itself, 
that just basically goes away, right? When we differentiate, because it has no x power, it has no x power there, right? So we just ignore it basically, and it goes away when we differentiate. This is minus x to the power of one. So I bring the one down, so that's minus one, and x to the power of zero is one. So it's minus one times one, which is minus one. Minus three x squared. I bring the two down. Two times minus three is minus six. Two minus one is one. Okay. So this is like a shortcut method. Um, let me do a couple other examples with you. So let's say f of x is equal to four uh, x cubed plus three x squared minus two x plus one. Okay. We can now say f dash x or dy dx. Normally, if it's notated as f of x, we use f dash x. If it says y equals we use dy dx. Basically, it's the same thing. It's just notation. Don't get confused, right? So let's look at this. I'll try and scroll this down. Yeah, there you go. So back to here. The rule x to the power of n. I bring it down and multiply what's there. So I bring the three down. Three times four is twelve. X three take away one is two. Plus, because it's a plus here. Two times three is six. Take one away from the power, x to the power of one. One times minus two is minus two. X to the power of zero is one, so that's left at minus two. That's a constant that goes away when we differentiate. Okay, so hopefully you're getting the hang of that now. I'm going to do a couple of examples in the book. So these are done in the book for you, right? Um, <coughs> And we're going to link in, again, we'll going back to a previous topic, we're going to link in our work on uh, indices and powers and that. So when we're differentiating, if you've got uh, an x on the underside of the denominator, focus please camera, right? That's 2 over x to the power of 1, okay? It's easier, in my opinion, well, it's just easier, basically, that's my opinion, uh, Sorry, the camera's not behaving, so I have to rewrite this as 3x squared plus 2 times x to the minus 1. Because we know from our... That's nearly there. We know from our work on indices that 1 over x is the same as x to the minus 1. Okay? Bear with me, I'm trying to get this to focus properly. So that's what I've applied there. 1 over x is the same as x to the minus 1. So instead of writing this as 3x squared plus 2 over x to the power of 1, I'm going 3x squared plus 2 to the x to the minus 1. That means when I differentiate it then, so this is written as y equals, so I'm going to write the differentiative derivative, differentiating it as dy dx. 2 times 3 is 6, times x to the power of a 1, because 2 take a 1. Right, so when we've got negative power, it's the same thing. Minus 1 times 2 is minus 2, okay? So we bring in the, this down, minus 2. Minus 2, take away 1, because we take away 1 from the power, is minus 2. So this becomes 2x to the minus 2. Okay? So if you want to go back and write it like that one above, you could write that as, I don't mind to ask, 6x minus 2 over x squared. Because x to the minus 2 is the same as 1 over, or 2, 2 times x to the minus the same as 2 over x squared. Okay? So either one of them is fine. So let's go to another one in the book uh, as an example. So I'm going to rewrite this as we should know that x, the square root of x is the same as x to the power of a half. And as above, minus 4 times x to the minus 2. Because x 4 over x squared is the same as 4 times. 
Then we can go to our, our, our shortcut method, bring the half down. So this is 1 times half, 1 times x to the power of a half. So half times 1 is a half. So that's a half of x. Half take away 1, because we take away 1 from the power, is a minus half. Okay. Be careful with this now, because it's to the power of minus 2. So I'm bringing the minus 2 down, multiplying it by minus 4. So it becomes positive 8, minus 2 times minus 4. x minus 2, take 1 away from the power, to the minus 3. Okay. And there you go. You can leave it with negative powers. I don't mind. Um, that's the same as 1 over 2 to the square root of x, because x to the half under there is the same as that plus 8 over x cubed. Right? Now I want to turn to page 278. We're going to do question 12 and then we're going to finish up and leave us some work, right? So um, this kind of sums up. This is the same thing we did uh, at the start of the video for your homework, but we're going to use the kind of rule by thumb now to differentiate it. So hopefully you're on page 278 there now and we're on Question 12, we have y equals 2x squared minus 3x plus 4. So it's asking us here for the slope and hence the equation of the tangent. Okay, So it's not telling you to differentiate because now you know that when you differentiate, it gives you an expression for the slope. Okay. So if you are, it doesn't necessarily tell you to differentiate, but you should know that at this stage now, if they're asking you for a slope of a curve, a, a slope of a tangent to the curve, we should differentiate. Okay, so if it's asking us for the slope, we're going to differentiate. So this is dy dx equals. Um, that's 2x squared. So I bring the 2, two down to make it 4x, because 2 take away 1 in the power. So what's going on with this? make it 4x, right, minus 3x, hopefully it'll focus now, so 1x to the power of 1, bring it down, that's going to be minus 3, because then you take 1, 1 minus 1 is 0, okay, and the 4 goes away, so dy dx here is 4x minus 3, hopefully you're getting the hang of that now, so that's an expression for the slope, now it asks us specifically for the slope at the point 1, 3, so that's when x equals 1. So slope at x equals 1 is 4 times 1 minus 3, which is 1. Okay? So if I want to find the equation of the line at that point, I know this coordinate, 1, 3, and I know the slope now, so I go into what I know about the equation of the line. y minus 3 is equal to m, the slope, which is 1, x minus 1, okay? And because we're all groovy math people, we're going to multiply this out and put it in general form, even though it doesn't ask for it. So we make one side equal to 0, basically. Okay, so x minus y plus 2, minus 1 plus 3 is plus 2 is equal to 0. That's the equation of line in general equation of the tangent of that curve at 1 minus 3. Okay. Thank you class. I'll give you some work on Google Classroom there now.